Russians, and the Russians know that if they keep the pressure up, you know, by hook or by crook in their view, they'll find a way of getting what they want in Ukraine. We are seeing a disconnect in the message that's coming from both the Ukrainian people and high government officials in Ukraine with projecting calm. And then we're hearing from NATO and Biden administration officials not calm. How can you uh, explain a little further the disconnect between those two messages? It makes perfect sense. I mean, if we think back to kind of the World War II scenario, I mean, I grew up in the United Kingdom. There were posters all the way around um, during World War II saying, keep calm and carry on. At the same time, that you know, there was constant warnings of air raid sirens and um, basically uh, building you know, bunkers and uh, air raid shelters and constant vigilance and, you know, warnings about German attacks. There were posters saying, keep calm and carry on because you don't want to have mass panic. And again, uh, you've got to get people prepared. An attack by Russia on an independent sovereign neighbor is an attack on uh, the basically the rules system that we've all operated on um, since World War II. We've actually tried to eschew the use of force to uh, make changes to uh, territory and to um, you know, basically undermine the sovereignty and independence of other countries. Even the Chinese should be concerned about this. Inside of Ukraine, of course, the Ukrainian government doesn't want to have panic, and they also don't want to see the complete collapse of the Ukrainian economy. In your assessment, do you think the US really understands Russian President Vladimir Putin? Does the US have a good enough grasp of himself and his options? We can't tell exactly what he's going to decide to do. But we actually have a pretty good assessment of who Putin is by now. 22 years in power. I mean, we have changed presidents, you know, five times in that time frame. But, you know, we've got an awful lot of people who've been watching Putin very closely. And if you put him in the context in which he operates and in, you know, the old Soviet context before, he's more predictable than he might seem in terms of the, the way that he um, formulates options and you know, his desire to have operational surprise. This is a, a critical moment for the United States because what the Russian government wants to do, the Kremlin and Putin, um, is to also push the United States out of Europe. It's a challenge to the United States role um, as a guarantor of European security, but also as a partner and an ally of European uh, countries in the NATO alliance. If Russia continues uh, its military posture and actually further invades Ukraine, is it a failure of, of President Biden to, to rally his allies? No, it's not. I mean, Putin, you, you cannot control completely the decisions of someone else. We are making it very clear to Russia what the costs will be from um, uh, an intervention. And that's on them. I mean, if they decide to go ahead with it. I mean, it will prove, you know, once and for all that the Russians don't care about Ukrainian people. They just care about the territory. And, the, and uh, this is, you know, the old Putin and the Kremlin being able to lay claim to Ukraine. Can you speak about President Biden's involvement in Ukraine? When he was vice president, he traveled there a lot. So he is very familiar with the country and the people. Has that helped him in this situation? I think it certainly has. And I mean, obviously, um, he has an even longer um, interest in Ukraine going back to when he was on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And I think in part that's why the Russians are trying to do this on his watch. Because, you know, obviously there was what happened in the previous administration uh, when President Trump went after both Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden, uh, usually trying to use Ukraine to, you know, kind of manipulate domestic politics because of uh, the, what I would very say very clearly was a very foolish decision on the part of uh, President Biden's son uh, Hunter Biden to go on the board of a Ukrainian energy company. I'll just you know, state for the record that I thought that that was a very foolish decision. That might have factored into some of the Russian calculations as well. Uh, but the Russians do see that Biden is, um, as president and formerly as vice president, somebody who was on the summit foreign relations, somebody who knows very deeply not just Ukraine, but the whole of European security and politics and Russia as well. We have to remember that as vice president, Biden met with Putin. He knows Putin. He knows who he is. All that 22 years that Putin's been in power, Biden's been out there in some capacity as well. So it's not like this is, you know, as we said, the first rodeo for him. So, you know, Biden has um, been in a different position from other leaders who, you know, may be encountering Putin for the first time. But, you know, Putin um, has, you know, basically outfoxed and outsmarted an awful lot of people over the 22 years he's there by trying to um, basically use his experience as a operative uh, for the Russian intelligence services and Biden's well aware of that. And you know, we've seen a lot more naivety 
uh, from other um, you know, uh, people in the past, other presidents, including President Trump, who thought that he could charm Putin. Uh, Putin is, it's Putin who manipulates people, not the other way around, and we have to be very well aware of that. Putin was trained to manipulate people.